Procurement is evolving faster than ever at the moment. There's new stuff coming out every day. The demands of business are changing. And in this video, I'm going to you arm you with 10 skills that you absolutely should prioritize and you should absolutely look to master them by 2030. If you want to have a, a thriving career in procurement, still be of value within your organization and just in general within the world. And a slight caveat to this, we're seeing AI change the face of traditional white collared roles, office based roles, knowledge worker type roles, and who knows what's going to happen in the next year, let alone the next few months. So let's get into this. Starting off with skill number one, it is AI literacy. I speak to procurement people all the time, and I'm kind of amazed actually that they're just not as tuned in to what's going on in the world of AI, right? There's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of changes to what's going on. There's new models. We've just seen uh, DeepSea come through. Uh, we're seeing operator models come in through ChatGPT, which is their agent uh, task engine, let's call it. We've also got tasks in ChatGPT. And the reason this is all important is because your favorite procurement tech, legal tech, supply chain tech, whatever tech you're using is pulling a lot of their AI capabilities from these pre-existing models. Well, I, I do think there's many solutions out there now that are using a proprietary model for AI. So you want to understand how these tools work because when you then start using them in the procurement tech that you're using, you'll already be up to speed with it. And you'll also be able to deploy new solutions faster because you'll have the ideas, the strategic mindset of how to deploy AI successfully within your organization. Next, we have being able to interpret data and use data. Now, what I've found incredibly useful over the last six months is actually using AI to help me with my data. I've just got Gemini within Google Sheets at work. I've been using GPT for a while, but all of this stuff really shortcuts the time it takes now for me to get really cool insights out of data that's just in spreadsheets and CSVs in just about anything, to be honest. And prior to this, you'd have to learn like formulas and just know a bunch of technical stuff to get the right insights. So it'd be a lot of workarounds of just a lot of nonsense, to be honest, a lot of stuff that I never really had time to learn or do. So really what you need to be good at now is understanding what data to use what data outcomes we want and how those outcomes can be used by the rest of the business to do stuff that is better than ever. So this could be working out a better cost consolidation strategy across your vendor base. It could be looking at seats versus cost uh, across a, a ton of different vendors, right? But all of this stuff now is far easier to do because of AI, which comes back to point one, right? Skill number one that we need is AI literacy. We need that AI layer there. Skill number three, I'm still extremely bullish on this despite everything that's going on with tech and AI. And this is negotiation skill. It's still the area, actually throughout my entire procurement career, it's the area that I've seen people struggle with the most. I've seen the, the worst, the worst practices be used uh, when, when it comes to negotiation, I've seen some absolute how does I actually made a video all about this a few weeks ago. You should definitely go check it out. That video is really centered on how to do negotiation far better with procurement and procurement contracts. Watch that video and go deploy some of those techniques. You'll already be in a far better position than you are right now. Skill number four is all around that digital procurement element. And this really coincides with skill number one, which is around AI literacy, but you need to understand how to do procurement digitally. There's still so many of you out there that have not been exposed to digital procurement. Your organization might not do anything digitally. I would just try and push it as much as you can internally. Do you have access to project management solutions? Things like ClickUp, Asana, Notion, things like that. That you could perhaps build a digital workflow in to cover your, your sourcing exercises, your RFP, your RFQ, your RFI processes, your onboarding of a new vendor. Can you do things like that to start applying 
all of this good knowledge you have, turning it into some sort of digital process where you click a button and it pushes you over to the next step. You don't need a human in the loop at every single phase. That's what I would be doing if I didn't have a budget. I would just look to see what other solutions we already have within the business. And most businesses now have some sort of project management-esque solution. And I would just get into that and use it as much as possible. And then from there, build out a business case to say, actually, if we had some dedicated solutions for procurement, we could do 10 times as much as what we're doing within this solution, which is probably already 10, 20 times what you can do manually. So it's really, really exciting to think like that. But digital procurement is a skill that you absolutely need. Like that's how much this is needed today. So please prioritize it. This one leads quite nicely based on everything we've already been talking about, but this is strategic thinking. How, how does procurement sit within your organization? How can we move away from constantly just doing like the, the task admin of POs of buying stuff, which is often reflected as being part of a purchasing team rather than a procurement team. But I still see procurement teams getting stuck in the weeds because they don't have digital procurement within their organization. They've got the wrong skill sets lined up with, with various tasks, right? They've got non-analytical people looking at data. They've got absolute bullish brutes who don't know how to negotiate negotiating and it might just be that you need to swap some people around to to make the right calls within your organization get the best outcomes for your organization so there's loads of stuff you can do here but it's all about elevating your thinking to how do we actually help the business save money make more money do things in a new innovative way most procurement teams can't even get close to this because they're just so stuck in the weeds. So supplier relationship management is one that I have been forever bullish on. It's something that I'm incredibly passionate about. And if you can't form really cool relationships with your suppliers, you really are going to struggle. This might mean you need to free up time from elsewhere, from other tasks, but this is a task that you should absolutely be focused on. And you should do it with data, right? Every single contract should have performance measurement within it. So this could be KPIs, it could be SLAs, it could just be reporting that you get from your suppliers and then you pull it into BI, into Tableau, into a spreadsheet, whatever it is you're doing, right? Use data here to figure out which suppliers are performing the best and then work on the relationships with your suppliers. Maybe it's their account executive, there's their customer success manager, it's their project manager, whoever it is, right? But really focus on those relationships. And just coming into all of this, right? Like a lot of what I'm talking to you about here is how procurement is changing. How just in general, knowledge workers are facing a lot of change. So naturally change management comes with this. Being able to bring people along with you regardless of your role if you're the most junior buyer going hey don't worry about it you can still bring people along the journey just being transparent sharing some views with them taking their views away maybe at your stakeholders that you're working with in your business you can take those to your manager you take them to your cpo whoever it is right like there's you should hopefully work in a team in an organization that has a really cool culture around it to let you do these kinds of things Skill number eight, cost optimization, just being able to save money in a good way, right? Not like just being brutish and wielding a sledgehammer with every single supplier, but using the data to figure out, actually, we've probably got some excess costs in this category, in these teams. We've got duplication of suppliers and vendors over here, or we're just not making use of certain solutions, certain SaaS products. And we should look to remove those as soon as possible. Just doing things like this can make a huge difference to the savings targets that you may have within your organization. It can also make you look really good. So just being proactive in, in your category or if you manage a, a portfolio of vendors and spend, absolutely prioritize this. But don't do it in like a really BS nonsense way because you're no, you're going to butcher everything else we've just mentioned right you're going to butcher the relationship you're probably not going to get the performance you need from that supplier and you're just going to derail everything so 
We can use certain things here, like the digital elements, the AI elements, the relationship elements to generate crazy cool saving opportunities with our suppliers here. Skill number nine is being able to work with other people in your organization, other team members, other parts of the business to get what you need. And that's a really big one. And this is something I've, I've mentioned for years now is this alignment to the rest of the business. What are the business OKRs? How does procurement align with those? And if they don't, then you probably should realign everything you're doing to focus on what the rest of the business is doing. I've, I've seen procurement teams isolate themselves, work in silos, just really narrow down their focus areas. And that sucks really because they're never aligned with the rest of the business and you just get these button of heads about certain initiatives, certain procurement tasks, and it all just, it goes badly. Let's, let's just say that it's never good. And just finishing off, skill number 10, lifelong learning. Seriously, if you're watching this video now, you're a lifelong learner. You're putting in the effort to take on a different perspective, some different ideas, you may not agree with all of them, and that's absolutely right. You shouldn't agree with everything I've just mentioned here. But in your brain right now, you're probably thinking like, oh, actually, I like three of these, but maybe I like these other three. And you can create your own list, your own areas to go off and research, to go and prioritize. And this is what's great, right? I consume, I take notes, I have thinking sessions where I'm just trying to figure out what's going on in the world. And I follow a lot of content that I absolutely disagree with, that I follow a lot I agree with, and I try and merge all of this with my own thought process to figure out actually what's happening in the world, where can I make an impact, what can I do differently? And I think that's really, really critical to everything that is going to happen over the next year, let's say, let alone the, the next five years. So to recap, we talked about AI literacy. We spoke about data analytics, we spoke about negotiation, digital procurement, strategic thinking, supplier relationship management, change management, cost optimization, cross-functional collaboration, and then lifelong learning. I really do hope you got some value out of this video. And I'm just going to point you to that video I mentioned earlier on. It's all about five ways in which you can do procurement negotiations, contract negotiations better than ever. I really like this video. It was really good fun to make. I shared some absolute howlers of negotiations that I've been involved in. Multi-million supplier deals that were absolutely butchered by people who should have known better. I share it all with you. So check it out. See you soon. Goodbye.